To get started on this project, we moved over our table saw and tilted the blade to about 25 degrees. Now unfortunately, this project is one that 100% requires a table saw, so you won't be able to finish this with just a circular saw. Sorry guys. I adjusted the fence so the blade will barely cut off one end of the board and then ran the piece through the table saw. Now we aren't giving any specific dimensions here because the plywood we're using is just offcuts from a previous project, but follow the same general steps and you'll have the exact same outcome. One thing to be aware of when making bevel cuts like this is that the offcut has a tendency to shoot backwards. Practice good table saw safety and make sure to stay clear of the wood as you cut. And I think it's important to be fully transparent with the projects we do, so I want to give credit to Brad over at Fix This, Build That and Johnny at Crafted Workshop for inspiring us with this method of making drawer pulls. With the bevel cut on one side of each piece, I slid the fence over to about one and a half inches, which will make the final height for all of the drawer pulls. Just make sure that the beveled edge that you just cut is against the fence of the table saw and run the piece through again so that you have a bevel cut on both sides. And while we cut down those pieces, we want to remind you to check us out over on Instagram at Spensley Design Co. You can help us reach 1,000 followers and check out all of our projects before they make it to YouTube. I think you're going to love what we have over there. Instagram is also our social media of choice. So if you ever just want to drop a comment, ask a quick question, come over there. We're happy to interact with you. And after ripping a bevel on both sides of all the pieces, we are ready to cut the ends. I grabbed our stock miter gauge that came with our table saw. However, I added an extra board screw to it for some extra support, and then placed one piece securely against it. I then ran the piece through the saw, making sure to push the offcut fully past the blade. And if you stop, there's a high likelihood that the piece will kick back or get jammed between the throat plate and the blade. Like this. While I cut the ends off the rest of the pieces, I also want to remind you to hit that like button below if you'd like to help support our channel. And if you're really interested in seeing more from us, click that subscribe and bell icon below so you never miss a future video. Thanks! To cut the poles down to their final size, I clamped a scrap block to a fence of the miter gauge and then ran the pieces through the saw again. Just make sure to use a scrap piece of wood to hold the pole while cutting so you don't have your finger super close to the blade. While I cut these down, I want to know, what do you want us to build? Leave a comment below and if we pick your idea for a future project, we'll feature your comment in our video. Thanks for all the great ideas in advance. We cut down a total of 20 drawer poles and I couldn't help but to stack them in a really cool pattern. Figured someone out there with OCD would love it. Whoops. I then started the tedious task of sanding all of the edges down with a random orbit sander. However, lucky for you, you get to watch a 5 minute edited version of this project that only includes about 10 seconds of sanding, so I'll spare you from having to watch anymore. So that's it, that's how you make these drawer pulls. With as many drawers as we have on this project, we wanted something that was not only cheap, but used up a lot of scraps around the shop. Now a regular drawer pull is right about $2 to $4, and we have 20 drawers that we need a pull for, so that's talking about $40 to $80. And for a shop project like this, it's not worth it in our mind. 